The greatest ideas have come from sitting on the toilet. Every day, some company, individual, or group is known for giving the public a load of bullshit. Come here to get your daily dose of shit by Alan Cousin. It's time you hear the shit everyone wants to know. Hello there, and welcome to your Daily Dose of Shit with Alan Cousin. Uh, I hope you're enjoying yourself today on this Wednesday, March 8, 2023. It's amazing, because I actually three months into the year, and so far, so good. Knock on wood, hopefully it'll continue. Hmm, but we'll see. Well, I will say today was not that bad of a day today. I actually got some work done, I got things accomplished. I feel like I'm getting on back on a positive road of... Feeling good about myself, feeling good about the week. The weekend is coming where, of course, I'll take a nice little trip to Houston with one of my girls so that she can uh, work on her exercising and laser therapy or something like that. But um, anyway, it was interesting. I I got the chance to do my normal routine, you know, sit down on my porcelain throne, scrolling through the news. Actually, surprisingly, not that much news going on except for Mr. McCarthy, of course, the Speaker of the House, who's basically just making himself look worse and worse, basically, by the uh, actions that he's doing and uh, decisions that he's making. But maybe we'll get into that another time, because that's not really what I'm focusing on. I like to focus today on something that's very unfortunate, very, very important, but overlooked by many people. I want to focus on the music industry. I remember back in the days when I used to be in the music industry, I actually was in the industry for about 20 years promoting and managing and marketing and producing and you know back then it was very difficult because you know you didn't have YouTube basically you basically had to book your bands and your groups you had to promote flyers creating them to pass out you had to work very diligently and hard by distributing their music on CDs or albums Uh, and of course all this cost money so you know it was very difficult to get a lot of things done if you didn't have the appropriate funds to do so and you know like I said you didn't have Spotify and iTunes and YouTube like you do today where now you just simply make a song you post it on the internet and voila there you go and it really upsets me because I was looking at an article today and um, re and actually watching a video talking about the institutionalized situation that they're still going through with record labels basically making tons of money billions and millions of dollars of artists where really now because of how things have changed they really should look at formatting the old contracts and creating new ones because see back then like i said you know we had to spend a lot of money to help artists get noticed you know with the create vinyl or create CDs or posters or advertisements, billboards, you know, we had to distribute, uh, make contracts with distribution, uh, like record stores and so forth to basically get this musical artist out and notice to the public. And now you don't really have to do as much. I mean, not saying it's not still something that's not done. Yes, you still make bookings in colleges and, of course, at different clubs. And, you know, of course, you still do produce CDs ever so often or I, or vinyl sometimes. Uh, but for the most part now, it's just you bring them into the studio, which, of course, studio time still costs money. I mean, trust me, I remember the thousands of dollars I spent on studio time for my musicians and how they didn't realize that when I asked for my percentage in my sales that uh, I really did deserve it because of how much money I spent on them in the studio. I mean, studio time was sometimes anywhere between $100 to $200 an hour. And trust me, musicians are good, but sometimes when it comes to actually getting them on vinyl or on a CD and finalizing that song, you'd be amazed how many takes it would take to actually get the final song cut. Could sometimes cost anywhere from upwards to 
twelve hundred to two thousand or three thousand dollars before they finally got all the songs done, or if not, maybe a minimum of three songs. So, like I said, I do understand the whole contract bit about making sure you get all your money back for all the money you spend. But when you have artists like Prince, um, Madonna, Michael Jackson, Alicia Keys, you know, these are people that not only understand their music, they produce their own music, they produce their own songs, they write their own songs and the sheet music and pretty much are geniuses in their own ways and making sure to get the song done in a very few amount of takes, if not maybe one, two, three takes, it's done, you know? And they were still paying millions of dollars in royalties towards record labels for production costs, for distribution costs, for um, management costs, which is understandable, for promotion costs, which it depends on how you promote now, you know, if you really needed to have 25 or 30% back for the promotion, if you didn't have to spend that much to promote, or, you know, the production, of course, yes, but, you know, having them where they're still getting 30 to 50% of your royalties and you're on Spotify, and Instagram and Vimo and YouTube where basically you're not really out there distributing vinyl or CDs, spending hard currency on hardware, so to speak, kind of confuses why they couldn't allow the artists to have a little more money into their pockets. And you don't think about that as a consumer because you're just buying the music, you know. But you're saying, oh, man, well, they're making all this money because they're the artists. No, you'd be amazed. Sometimes the artists at most will get 10 to 12 percent of their money. That's 10 to 12 percent off every dollar, basically. And that's when they make megastar. So when they're not even a megastar yet, they're, right, they're lucky to be getting 3 to 5 percent if they're if at anything as an artist during the times where they're being promoted and performing, which a lot of people, like I said, don't realize and don't understand. And, you know, this whole thing with Kanye West, you know, Kanye West is explaining how he wants things changed and how he's being utilized and he's upset because you don't really understand when he got mad at the Jewish community and he was talking about the Jewish individual who basically, um, I many people realize, is one of the most leading entertainment investors and contributors in the music industry. So Kanye West was upset because he's making all these songs and yet he's getting little of the money back. And I'm sure you would understand if you're taking your time to make these record albums and songs and you're doing quite well in doing this to the point where it doesn't take long to make it happen. So you're not spending a lot of money to do it or produce it, but yet you're getting a little of it back because the record labels are still grasping at these clauses that really should be taken out of the contract because, like I said, times have changed. You know, it's it's more of a technolo technological time where you don't have to spend as much to make albums or songs get produced. So a lot of people don't understand that Kanye's not going crazy. You know, he's just being very straightforward about what's going on. I mean, Snoop Doggy Dogg has talked about it. Michael Jackson talked about it. Prince talked about it. And as you can see, unfortunately, Prince and Michael Jackson died of fentanyl interesting you know that they overdosed on fentanyl you know two great artists who yes they had their stressful times but to just all of a sudden overdose on fentanyl after they've started to talk the truth about record labels as well as earn more money from record labels michael jackson died of overdose of fentanyl after he finally was receiving 50 percent of profits from Sony. Prince died of fentanyl after he started to speak about how he was not even utilizing the record label's money to produce his own album. He was using his own money and time, but yet still paying out the money as if they were giving him money for the production. So I'm just saying, you have to really realize sometimes when you see these artists go insane, so to speak, in your mind or 
in your vision you think they're crazy no no they're just being honestly truthful abruptly and they are now being shut up or shot down because they don't want you to know the truth about your celebrity stars they don't want you to know how hard it is for them to work and how they're really slaves to the industry because sometimes they'll be told they can't leave the house leave the room leave the apartment because they have to be quote unquote not seen for so many months so then when they finally are placed out people would want to you know go to their concerts and see them or they're told how to shave their head or how to dress or how to speak or where to go you know these are things that they are told because once they sign that contract they're pretty much told whatever i say the record label does they must do and you know yeah you want that popularity you want you crave and yearn the money to make yourself known not realizing in the end what you lose the self-respect the freedom to just be yourself and do whatever you want is gone literally taken away because of a signature because you wanted to be famous because you wanted to be targeted and seen around the world not realizing all that money that you thought you know you were getting from the record label was really just an ability to capture your soul and have you be a mindless music music musical musician slave and so i'm talking about it because i've been there i mean i was a manager you know i know how much money it cost me to manage artists i know how much it cost me to produce you know studio time and like i say develop uh record label uh records and cds and cd covers and so so Yes, back then, we deserved to have that cut. We deserved to have that higher percentage because we needed the money back from the sales for the amount of money we pushed out. But now, I agree with the musicians. I agree with the musical artists. They need to change the contract. They need to rectify it to the point where the artist gets more, if, indeed, the artist does more and deserves to profit more from each sale of each song record and album if they're actually producing and making songs and creating these songs in such a quick efficient time that less money is being spent i totally agree that the contracts need to be reinvented so to speak but like i said i'm just giving you my opinion from a musical point of being a musical manager and promoter and marketer and being in the record industry for over 20 plus years so that's what i feel now of course everybody has their own opinion but i'm just saying it's just looking from the facts you don't need 20 percent distribution anymore you don't need 20 percent uh record clause uh record breakage clause which basically means if you ship records and they break you know you have to replace them so you have to get 20 percent just in case there is no such thing you don't need you know 20 percent of the relocation you know where basically you had to relocate them different areas in case of um people looking for them these clauses need to be taken out basically because they don't exist anymore you know and so i i i i i admire the artists that are now speaking up and trying to change things because they deserve it because they've worked hard to earn what they have as far as popularity and because of their popularity they're bringing this money into the pockets of record producers and record labels who are making 60 percent compared to their 10 to 20. think about it you make the song you sing the song you go perform the song yet you only get 10 cents off that dollar they get about 80 to 90 cents off that dollar how does that make you feel but you're doing most of the work. I mean, you really are. Think about it. So, now for those that don't, then yes, they still need the original contract. If they're learning, if they're a newbie, and they don't understand, and they're not making the songs themselves, not producing the songs themselves, yes, then keep the original contract. But for those who are advanced and outstanding in their work, they deserve to have a change in percentage points. You know? 
So that's just me giving you my daily dose of shit because, like I said, this world is a cruel, cruel world. And a lot of times people don't see what goes on behind closed doors, you know, what goes on behind the stage. All you see is the popularity, the media, the publicity, you know, the stardom, the ability to spend and do many things but you don't see what happens once that door is closed you don't know what that musician is going through that musical artist that band is going through you don't understand what they're mentally feeling and emotionally going through after the concert or promotions or bookings or tours you know so just something to think about when you buy your next you know, Spotify song or album or listen to them on Amazon or, you know, on radio app or our Get Up Radio app, you know. Think about what these artists are going through and how much money they're really not making from the dollars that you're spending towards them to listen to their song. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play one song because like I said, I can play many songs and many artists who are great out there but then that'll be a long show so i'm just going to play one song that was one of my favorites from one of the artists that i truly admired and still admire to this day and i do miss because he was indeed a genius in every way possible so i'm going to allow you to listen to prince uh i wish you heaven because you know of course he is now in heaven looking down upon us, probably playing music throughout the stars in the universe. And sometimes you may hear it in the wind as it passes you by or see it in the asteroid as it goes across the earth because frequency of music can come in various ways. So listen and enjoy as I have.
There you have it. I wish you heaven by Prince. You know, it's interesting, actually, because I had an opportunity to actually buy a signed guitar by Prince from his Purple Rain concert. And I, at the time, I was a college student, of course, and uh, Doc, who's quite well off with his family, of course, uh, because he liked me so much, said, hey, man, you know, you're cool and everything, and, you know, my friends, so, hey, I'll give you a chance to, have, you know, get something that you love that Prince actually had and you know, I was like man I wish I could have bought it back then it was like a thousand dollars but for a college student a thousand dollars a little difficult to come up with you know now of course now if you would say hey Alan I have this three grand I'd be like yeah, sold you know with no problem so but you know like I said uh I did get opportunity to like actually go to the club uh and I was invited to see Prince perform at his private club which was nice and also uh I did do a actual um, petition to actually have Prince's landscape as a historic landmark, and his sister thanked me for the petition, and I think that they're still actually going through the process of actually trying to make it a historic landmark in Minneapolis. Because um, like I said, you know, he was a great man. He was a man of his times. I remember, i never forget also... Um, he actually had an album, uh, Diamonds and Pearls. And, you know, I was so much into, you know, Prince and so much into being very analytical and, uh, that I actually looked at the album and I discovered that the phone number was actually like in the cover. And I called the phone number, you know. I was like, whoa, here's a phone number here in the cover. I'm going to call this phone number. And I called like probably one or two in the morning because, you know, college student. And uh, sure enough, Prince answered. And he said, hello. And I was like, hey, is this Prince? He said, yeah. Uh, what do you want? I said, um, I don't know. I just want to say hello. What are you doing? He said, I'm I'm in the studio right now making music. Uh, yeah, got to go. He hung up with the phone. So, of course, what do you do? You know, of course, I call back. And he's like, hello. I was like, yeah, Prince, it's me again, Alan. He's like, oh, it's you again. Okay, yeah. Um, why are you calling me back? I was like, well, you know, I know you're performing. What, you know, what new song are you playing? I'm just curious, you know, because I know it's probably a new song. He's like, yeah, it is. And yeah, I'm not going to tell you. I got to go. Bye. And he hung up. But, you know, it was just funny. You know, it's like, hey, I found the number and I called him and, you know, he answered. And I spoke to him for a few minutes. And, you know, yo, we never met in person. I mean, when I did see him perform in his private club, I mean, I never approached him, you know, of course, because he was always heavily guarded. So, but it was just funny that, uh, you never really think you get to meet people and do the things you think you could do. But then you find out, hey, I can. Because, you know, anything is possible in this world. And I've discovered that. I mean, I was a nerd. I was a bully con constantly in my life. And, you know, here I am now on my little podcast that I do because I like to basically speak. And for those who want to listen, they get to hear me. And I have a radio station. I have a media broadcast station. Um, I'm doing well for myself. I've met many celebrities in my lifetime. Probably will meet many more. I'm well connected with politicians as well as um, CEOs and uh, directors and other people, I should say. Like I say, you just never know what will happen in your life. You never know where you'll go, where you'll be, because time is of the essence and your journey is already created. The end is already there. Just as well as the beginning. It's just the middle part is what you create. And what you decide on how to get to the end. Interesting to think about when you think about that, right? You know, the beginning is already consumed. So, you, you know, you don't start the beginning. You don't have the choice of your beginning. You don't have the choice of your end. You just have the choice of how to get from the beginning to the end that's your choice so there's many paths you will take to get to the end it just determines on which path you choose and how that path creates a new path to go to the next path to the next path until you finally get to the end so just think about that you know you have the choice of living but the beginning and the end is already finalized so Anyway, with that, I just want to say thanks for listening. Um, think about those record labels. Think about that money you're spending. 
And think about that artist when you see them in person on stage or, you know, by their song. About what they're going through to really make that dollar. So, till tomorrow, as always, thank you for listening. And remember, there are idiots everywhere. Just smile and ignore them because, hell, I do it every day. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Thanks for listening to your Your daily daily dose dose of shit shit talk show. If you have some insights, questions, or information of bullshit to pass on, please email us at momentousevents at AOL.com. Make sure to come back daily to hear some new shit about money, business, life, and who knows what else as I take a dump on the toilet.